Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in light of my recent video about Blue Origin and exploring other space companies besides the big guys, I recently read an article about another up and coming space company. And though they are in the early stages of raising capital and doing tests, I had never heard of them before. And they are located right here in the good old US of A. So I thought for today's video, I would highlight yet another entry in the space economy game. Another chance for yay, more rockets because I'm about it. I've decided I'm about yay more rockets. So today's video is going to be about a company called Stoke Space. Now Stoke Space is based in Kent, Washington, which is near Seattle. And they recently announced that they have raised over $260 million to advance development of a fully reusable launch vehicle and its Cape Canaveral launch site. To date, it is reported that they have raised nearly $500 million total. And they were founded by a group of former employees of both Blue Origin and SpaceX, which sounds like it could be kind of a juicy story or maybe just drama I'm making up in my head. Andy Lapsa, the chief executive and co-founder of Stoke Space, worked on engine development for a decade at Blue Origin before founding Stoke. Their focus has been on working on Nova, a medium lift launch vehicle whose two stages are both designed to be reusable. On December 12th, 2024, the company performed the first firings on a vertical test stand of Zenith, the engine that will power the first stage of the vehicle. That engine used using liquid oxygen and methane propellants, uses a full-flowed stage combustion architecture for peak efficiency. Stokespace's goal is to have every part of its rocket be rapidly reusable. Now, SpaceX has famously been reusing its first stages for a while now, but not its upper stage. And a reusable upper stage is a puzzle that a lot of space companies have been trying to crack for a bit. And Stoke Space was founded with solving this puzzle in mind. They're moving away from heat shields of Dragon or Soyuz capsules or the ceramic thermal tiles that were used for the shuttles. Stoke Space is aiming for this metallic heat shield, which they say will be actively cooled on re-entry. But placing a heat shield on the underside of a spacecraft trying to land upright can create issues. But Stoke Space feels like they can do it. And in 2023, they did a variety of testing, including a successful up and down test of its Hopper developmental rocket vehicle. This was actually the Hopper 2, and its 15 second flight took place at Stoke's test facility in Moses Lake, Washington. A hydrogen fueled rocket engine sent the test vehicle to a height of 30 feet, with a landing 15 feet away from the launch pad, according to CEO Andy Lapsa. Lapsa said, it's our last test in our developmental program for Hopper, and by all accounts, it's been very successful. And this Hopper test mattered because, according to Lapsa, this Hopper program was really geared to develop the reusable second stage system, and specifically prove out a lot of the new and novel technology elements that go into it. There's the actively cooled, regeneratively cooled heat shield. We have a very unique rocket engine with a single set of turbo machinery that feeds an array of thrusters. Both of those two, the heat shield and the engine, are coupled. Stoke Space says on its website that this design is akin to imagining a car where the engine is cooling the brakes as it's driving downhill. That's kind of what they're thinking about. And again, this heat shield is meant to be reusable. So there's none of this like materials and bits flying away on re-entry. This whole thing is meant to work time and time again. Stoke Space also says that its Nova rocket can be used for a variety of functions. This includes deploying satellites to space, performing manufacturing and science experiments in space, collecting and returning satellites, and removing space debris. Nova is designed to place 3,000 kilograms into low Earth orbit when both stages are reused, and up to 7,000 kilograms otherwise. The upper stage can bring back payloads from orbit as well. Lapsa said that Nova can provide customers, particularly of smaller payloads, with the reliability, affordability, and cost that they are looking for in a market that right now has pretty limited competition. He also knows 
noted that the ability of the upper stage to return payloads opens up additional opportunities. Lapsa said, rapid and reliable reuse of a rocket's upper stage is the last big challenge to solve before mobility to and from space becomes akin to other forms of transportation. It represents a significant inflection in the space economy and in turn opens the door to an incredible set of business opportunities that make life more vibrant on and off Earth. And I've heard this before, and I'm sure you guys have too, this idea that rockets launching would eventually just be like planes taking off. And we're not all sitting here live streaming jet blue planes taking off, right? Actually scratch that. I bet there's a YouTube channel that does do that. <laughs> there's a YouTube channel that does everything, but you guys get my point. And also just to normalize reusability in the world of space travel, because as we all know, in the world of air travel, these big 747s are reused multiple times per day. And for the most part, that works. And also the funds that Stoke Space is raising are not just going towards Nova, but also towards renovations of Launch Complex 14 at Cape Canaveral. Stoke Space says it won the go ahead in 2023 to take over the Florida Launch Complex, where John Glenn began his trip that made him the first American in orbit in 1962. Julia Black, Stoke Space's Director of Launch Operations, said in a news release, we are over the moon excited by this opportunity to be trusted with the reactivation of the historic Launch Complex 14 is an honor, and we look forward to adding to its well-distinguished accomplishments for America's space program. Launch Complex 14 was not only the site for John Glenn's historic liftoff, but also for the three Mercury Atlas missions that followed. After Mercury, it was used to support the Gemini program, but it became inactive in 1966. The site's original blockhouse was restored and converted into a conference center and an occasional tourist stop in the 1990s. Jennifer Thompson, Stoke Space's head of marketing, said, we're already talking about how to preserve this site and its historical significance while building it out to support the future of space. And that bit kind of makes me happy. This idea that Stoke Space is not only investing in the future of space travel, but also in preserving its past. The company is making good progress on renovations, and they say that the launch site should be ready by the end of this year, but they declined to give a date on when they thought the first launch would take place. I did read an article from 2024 where they claim that the first launch date for Nova could be as early as 2026, which seems very fast, but who knows? It just feels like we're in this era of space travel where like things are happening either mind-blowingly fast or agonizingly slow. It's like two speeds, that's it. So I will keep an eye on Stoke Space and its Nova rocket. It seems like they could be a very interesting player in this whole new space race game. They've got their own trailer because of course they do, for their company. And I will put that over on Patreon in full if you guys want to see that. The vibe of the trailer is definitely not NASA, definitely not SpaceX. It's more of like, a, oh, we're just reinventing the wheel over here. No big deal. I mean, that kind of sounds cocky. It's not that. It's just more like nose to the grindstone. We're making the impossible possible because we think we can but I'll post it over on Patreon. You guys tell me. So let me know what you guys think of Stoke Space. Had you ever heard of them before? And also, are there any other 90s kids out there who like grew up in that era using the word stoked? So when I hear, when I read Stoke Space, it's all I can think of. I'm just stoked about space. I'm super stoked about it. <laughs> uh, sorry, Stoke Space. I'm a child. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.